Good morning, everybody. It is Brittany at Big Cat Rescue here in Tampa, Florida, and it is one of our biggest days of the whole year. And it is Giving Tuesday. Woo -woo. So I really, really, really need you to do this. I say this every single live. Please share this and please tag each other. Notify everybody that we're live. Um, Afton is going to give our feeding tour today. She's never here on Sunday, so I've never been able to get her to do one, but this is Tuesday, so um, Afton has chosen the cats. She's in there right now getting all of the diets um, squared away, making sure that everybody has exactly what they're supposed to have. And then she is gonna be giving us our tour today for Giving Tuesday. So just a real quick reminder that we have a $35,000 match. So that is our goal today is to make sure that match gets all used up. So please, even if it's a dollar, if you guys can um, donate on any of our lives today, we would greatly appreciate that. Yay! <laughs> uh, excited Afton phase. <laughs> So yeah, take it away, Afton. What are we doing today? We are going to give people a cat today. Um, the well, Freddy's species, all the diets are set to go. This is Miss Priya, Jasmine. Woo. And we'll see the rest of the world today. Okay. And we can talk about their diets and we'll get them done. Perfect. All right. Great. Everybody's sharing and tagging since Facebook doesn't always alert people that we're live and this is a very important day to be live. There's one of our girls waiting not so patiently. <laughs> she, I heard she's been giving the sass. Yeah, she's been giving the sass. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca, for the donation. Now, another thing I want to point out really quickly is that I still do not get to see who donates on these lives. So unless um, some of our admins can say that, like, uh, thank you, Cassie, for saying that Angel donated. If I don't see somebody thank them or I'm not looking at the screen, I'm so sorry I'm not able to individually thank you guys today. Just know that Afton and I thank you very, very much. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> we have a huge goal today, a $100,000 goal, and we have a $35,000 match. So you can see some of the names here. We're gonna see Mr. Bear, Max Bobcat, Chaos, Ginger, Zucari, Beecher. All right. Woo! Okay, we'll go to our first first girl. Yeah. Do you have like all your tongs and sticks and all the things you might need? I <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy, for your donation. So Afton is giving the tour. I am very excited about that. I'm going to try to let her do most of the talking. So we will follow along. <laughs> she is. Thank you, Shauna, for the donation. So we are going to do several lives today. This is our first of the day. Try not to run over any of our special keepers all coming back from feeding. So our route is going to be all the cats that, hi, good morning, that haven't had breakfast yet. So we're going to try to keep moving along. Whoa. All right, so. <laughs> Happy and hungry, usually. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least with people like you and I, you can tell when we're smiling, even in the mask, but. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys, so I am pretty much going to let Afton take this away. If you guys have questions, I'll try to 
um, pop them in there occasionally, but Afton's gonna lead our tour here. She's got awesome information, so. Oh, right, we start with Priya. Today she's got a bunch of red. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, their diets are different pretty much every day of the week. I'm gonna put it close to you. Sorry, it might weird you out, but that way people oh, can no, hear you. Cool. Okay. <laughs> people can't always hear because of the mask, so. And she can't come in here while I'm feeding or putting the food in because this is called protective feeding and we do it with all of our medium and our big cats. Yep, so she's safely out there outside of some doors. All right, girlfriend, you want that door? Ready? So she's gonna open that lockout door. And Priya can come over. Good stuff. <laughs> you got to chew it a little bit more. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that was a kid. big gulp. <laughs> that was a hard swallow. <laughs> <laughs> and things we look for while they are eating is, are they chewing on both sides? Um, that's a good indication if they're not, that they may have some kind of dental issues, which she's been doing very well. Um, they, do not, they do not use their canine teeth to eat. It's, um, a lot of people think that when they see some of these rescue guys that do not have canine teeth, and she's got some short ones, that they don't actually use these to eat their, um, their kill teeth. And then they use their back um, carnassal teeth to scissor off swallowable pieces. Sometimes they're too big to swallow and oh. then they walk away with it. <laughs> <laughs> You're too close to my food. Exactly needs a privacy. <laughs> Actually, I think it was yesterday I drove by and she still had a piece of red on her plate. Maybe it was Sunday. And she was over there laying in her sunshine spot. And I drove up to talk to her and she got up and then she walked over here and it was like 45 minutes later by the time she walked over and she finished it on her own time but Maybe she snacks yeah she heard what Kali and Jasmine been up uh -huh. to <laughs> stash and snacks in their dens for I later I say but they hide theirs she left hers blatantly on the plate <laughs> I was like mm, they're gonna find she that she figured it out <laughs> she also has an acre and a half she could hide hers in yeah. <laughs> she doesn't do it uh well, thank you again very much, everybody, for all of the donations. We just got started, so Priya's only the first cat we've seen. Why'd you, uh, why'd you pick Priya today? I noticed you, you picked certain cats. Are some of these your favorite, certain ones that you wanted to tell stories about? I did it based about? on their diet choice for today. Mm -hmm. um, and then with Priya, she might have a little less than you'll see as we go along because she is on eye drops again. And this is something that kind of happens on and off with Priya. She was rescued with um, kind of a wonky eye. Her third eyelid's always just partially up. That's normal for her. But a couple weeks ago, we noticed that it was all the way up. And we could see that she had a kind of bluish hazy circle on her eye, um, which is an ulcer um, caused by maybe she scratched it on something and um, uh, caused like a little abrasion on her eye. So we give her eye drops, which mm -hmm. sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> um, something I can cross off my bucket list. Same. <laughs> eye drops to a tiger. Um, and if you're curious on how that works, you can um, go to Big Cat TV and there's actually a video that kind of describes what's going on and how we do the eye drops. She's a very good girl, but what we do so that we can control her weight and not be, add more food to her day is we take the food out of her morning diet for her eye drops for the day. Mm -hmm. She gets them three times a day, uh, first thing in the morning, right about noon, and the last thing before we go. Um, she's been on them for two weeks now. We just keep reevaluating every week as the ulcer kind of clears up. This is the second occurring one in the same spot, so maybe it um, didn't get super resolved and she kind of rubbed at it or something like that. 
but she is very good girl when it comes to her eye drops. She is. I, I was nervous because, I mean, I watched um, you guys do Zeus forever, um, but I was still a red shirt and a yellow shirt, and so Priya is the first one I've ever been trained to do, and I was like, you just ruined me. You made it so easy. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of us seasonal veterans with the eye drops. Exactly. I was like, you just made it way Get too last easy. Piece. Get that last piece, babe. But good thing for Priya is now she gets snacks two more times today. <laughs> yes. Good girl. Two more times you get snacks. Yep, clean plate girl. Lick all the gravy off. Thank you, Cheryl and Janet, for your donations. And if you are curious about seeing that eye drop video, you can go to bigcattv.com and probably just search tiger and eye drops and you're gonna find it for Big Cat Rescue, but yeah, it was posted it was about only a few months ago. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. ago. Hi! Was it good? Yeah. Approved. She's like, I guess you can go feed somebody else now. <laughs> Gotta get all the blood off. Makes it easy for the cleaners. Yeah. You're hired. You're hired. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't know how much leaning down I'm going to be able to do for the rest of the day, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna try. Uh, all right. So now Priya's ready to take an all-day nap somewhere. All right. So where are we headed next? Running Bear and Beecher. Okay. it'd be easiest to follow her so she can have all the food sorted on her cart and I can have all of my technology and myself on my cart and then I can take little moments to thank everybody that I'm seeing who has donated thank you Kim again our goal for the day is a hundred thousand dollars we've been sending out emails oh we're being chased there's Duchess Duchess already had breakfast though and today we are trying to fill our $35,000 match. So if you are donating today on any of our lives, your donation is getting doubled, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I will address some of the cat moves that happened and are still trying to happen. <laughs> Sounds like there's going to be way more than what I even knew about. So, all right. So we'll get to that. Oh, he sure does. Yeah, turkey and chicken breast and red and pork. Good job, oh, Bear. Right. <laughs> and his is cut up, which is slightly different. He is a very old man and may not have all of his teeth. I don't think he has hardly any teeth oh, okay. at this point. Uh, we cut it Bless up, so him. It's just easy to be sold. Bless his little heart. He is 24 years old. He's officially our oldest guy, oldest cat. There's Bear. And yes, still very much a feisty Bob. Yep, go ahead. Yep. Afton's getting a phone call from Carol, so she's going to step away for a second. That's okay, because Bear can eat his red. So what you're seeing right here is his feeding lockout. He's got a bowl of water that we've actually placed on the ground for him, because he's a little too old to want to pee in it or play in it easier for him to reach that way. He's got his feeding slab here and then there's a door that we can open and close if needed and then there's a thin layer of mesh on the outside of the lockout that helps us when it comes to vultures or birds that might try to intimidate or steal the food from the cats. So real quick, I will tell you that yesterday, Mr. Mouser Savannah moved into the kitten cabana and Simba Savannah went into the enclosure that Mouser was in over by Frankie and Filmo. They're both doing well. We did that so that we could test Simba out and see if less mosquitoes are helpful to him and to warm Mouser up a little bit so that he will eat more consistently. So that is kind of becoming our hybrid vacation. Rotation. Yeah, <laughs> it's our hybrid vacation rotation at this point. Well, it keeps him out of my office, which is good. Yes. <laughs> he loves to spill coffee and ruin your keyboard. I was going to say, destroy keyboards. Um, 
So this is a good option and it gives Simba something else to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's it's always going to be about the needs of the cat and so we figured we'd rotate him back out while it's nice and cold and see if that helps. Things may get swapped around again. You just never know. When Loki came back outside, he like he like found his groove. He's yeah. been like really happy outside. So maybe putting them inside for a little while, they're like, you know what? It was nice outside. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. But that's an update on the hybrid uh, yeah, move sure yesterday. It warms up again, and mosquitoes become an issue. We'll probably have to swap them back out again. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because Mouser does pretty good when it's warm. When, when it's, it's warm, yeah, not. He does, he does yeah. great, and he has been doing well. I noticed this this past week he had a full day of not wanting to eat or take his meds, and I don't know what was going on in that corner. Yeah. A lot of the cats were acting funny. Yeah, um, sometimes I think it's But the... I heard coyotes on Thanksgiving night on the other side, and I thought maybe I was crazy, but Filmo... <laughs> like validated that there was something <laughs> going on over there <laughs> always get on their intuitions too good job bub keep going i know but yeah he was a little shivery friday morning yeah so i um did his med and fed mouser in the cabana last night for the first time and i was nervous i'm like i've been in the office with him before once or twice but not um, not in a brand new environment for the first like yeah. few hours and he did great. He did definitely want to block me from leaving. So that made it fun. <laughs> I was like, I don't want you to go through the safety door, but <laughs> I can't like move you. So yeah, it was interesting, but he did really well. Yeah. Good job. Just a baby. couple of things all change in there. He, um, he needs a bigger litter box than that because he will make a mess. Yeah. So I have his in the office. I'll swap it out. And I also have one of his beds in there that's just bigger for him. He'll mm -hmm. fit in. And it's familiar to him too. So it might right. make him feel a little better. Yeah. Do you want to talk to everybody about Mr. Bear and his um, hairdo? <laughs> <laughs> It's um, the nicest way to put it. <laughs> yeah, that's cute though. Um, so you can see around uh, Running Bear's neck, he has some uh, mats or dreadlocks, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically because he has been declawed and he cannot groom properly and he probably has some old man problems with like arthritis mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That is also causing him not to be able to groom properly. And we do have a scratch program, but Bear is um, <laughs> not a participant <laughs> yes, by his choice. He's a little too grouchy for that. He doesn't um, even like when you give him treats on a stick, let alone when you're yeah, just trying to brush him. He's pretty ferocious so he about is. it. <laughs> these ones don't, they look like they're on the surface. So I don't think mm -hmm. that these ones bother him. Um, that long one did fall off. I tried to pull it with tongs the other day and yeah. I got it. And when I pulled he did not Man. like it, yeah. so I didn't try again because I didn't want to make him upset. I'm actually noticing that there are fewer and fewer, so he's got to be rubbing them onto something yeah. in there. Because um, he is a very rubby, especially with enrichment, and he's been getting a lot of enrichment lately. So I'm wondering if that's not just helping like Get rub off. that off. Yeah. Bless your heart, buddy. That must be a very good breakfast. You had one of each of everything. Yeah. Yeah, if you times the cat's age roughly by about six, that's what they'd be in human years. So Mr. Bear's well into his hundreds of <laughs> grumpiness. <laughs> he lived here for actually many years with a female named Little White Dove. And of course they help groom each other when they share an enclosure like that. So it wasn't until very recently that he started getting matted but are you guys still gonna try the squeeze cage thing at some point? I think maybe so. Yeah. yeah, I think that they'll come off pretty easily yeah. by just looking at them. And we worked with um, when we had Tom Tom, and hers were way worse than this, mm -hmm. and she was also just as grouchy. Yeah. <laughs> and we were able to work with her enough to get them all off. Yeah. So I think his will be pretty quick. A lot of them will probably just pull off if you have long tweezers and you just mm -hmm. pull. They'll just pull right off. Yeah. Quick and easy. We could probably even do it right out here in this cage if we just put him in a shift him into a squeeze cage right from here we can mm -hmm. probably take care of it and let him back out yeah It'll not be less stress for him yep. instead of bringing him inside well, that sounds like a good plan <laughs> your beecher being like oh yeah. hello <laughs> <laughs> i'm also on this list <laughs> that's very good 
good. Yeah. He's being very tolerable of our presence. He is, I know. This is probably the nicest running bear we're going to get all day. Uh-huh. <laughs> His yeah. food people. Yep. Why to go boy? Oh. We got a couple pieces. Oh. oh, now now we're getting now we're getting a little irritation. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. There you go. It's like he just realized we're still here, actually. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, Mister. All right, we'll get off oh, your lawn. My we will get off your lawn now. You can see the lengths we have to go through with the hybrids. There's Cat, who's coordinating for today, <laughs> sitting with Tut, <laughs> trying to make sure Tut eats. <laughs> yeah, Tut wanted nothing to do with what I gave him yesterday. I was like, ah, oh, buddy. I know. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. Oh, miss, miss. I think you had breakfast, my girl. Sorry. Forever hopeful. Okay, what do you have today? First of all, he has um, kibble. It's uh, like a raw boost kibble that for a lot of... <laughs> Are you making He's your air biting. You're air biting. Um, a lot of the hybrids aren't giant fans of the mush, so this is kind of their mush substitution. Um, and the little, the big little chunks here are actually a uh, freeze dried raw chicken to kind of help with that. And then I'm pretty sure it is fish and shrimp day for you too. Ooh, which is, oh, all, yep. it is Always every hybrid's epic. favorite day. Yep. <laughs> epic day for hybrid here. <laughs> Look at it. To bounce these over here. Yeah. <laughs> they're very messy. Fish is very messy. Let me get, you, get you started. <laughs> Before I bounce these all over the place. <laughs> there we go. Raining good food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never care where they bounce as long as they stay in there, and yeah. that's the hard part. I'm trying to do like the, the side toss, but I also don't want to hit them either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing more um, devastating than oh. when food hits the cat <laughs> sorry, and they buddy. look at you and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, at least it gives, oh, <laughs> it gives them something to do. <laughs> that one piece keeps coming out. <laughs> uh, sorry, bud. Here. It's a little like the. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh, why? <laughs> I know, and it makes me sadder when, with a cat like him where he doesn't have claws, so like he could reach out to get it, but like they struggle a little more than if they just had a nail to like Hook stick it in. in. Like a cartoon cat. Good job, bud. Oh, my food confetti going everywhere. <laughs> but at least it slows him down. Nope. I'm gonna have to move it so we can save all your fishes. Man, there's a shrimp. Can't leave that. Here we go. Get him to eat all his meat before I offer his kidney. All right. more important than the little vegetable kibbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the good stuff. I think you got them all. You gotta get your kibbles, buddy. Oh, there they are. Oh. <laughs> oh, like, oh, there's a fish. There is one fish left. <laughs> and you know it, too. Gotta follow your nose. Right behind ya. Good nope. boy. Okay, now we're in the kibble. Beecher was very picky before we uh, 
decided to take the mush away and add this kibble. I did a lot of searching for a good substitution that they actually like. Mm -hmm. And I think it's when their mush is in their container with their food when we prepare it the day before. I think everything then tastes like mush to them. Yeah, so when you eliminate chance. that, it started to help. And he's always been, before that, kind of thin because I think he was not eating all of his food. Mm -hmm. So now he always eats his food and he looks pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. Consistent. We'll have to show everybody mush on the next camp. One of the next camps? Yeah. Because I don't think we've handed any out yet. Oh, yeah. So we've nope. talked about it, but we haven't shown it yet. So we'll do that. Kari's got a big ball of mush. Yes. Woo. Got to slow down a little bit. For anybody who's looking for additional information about these cats, you can find all of their bio pages on our website, bigcatrescue.org slash cat bio. That will list approximate birthdays. Um, a lot of them are estimated because you don't always get real information when you're rescuing um, cats. There's a lot of shady activities. <laughs> so lots of illegal breeding and such. So, um, I just looked at it. We've only got, I think, one birthday and maybe two anniversaries in December. But then we celebrate over <laughs> half the sanctuary on January 1st. Yeah. So, um, Beecher came to us on his fifth birthday. And I think he's like nine now. Ish. It has been that long. Yeah. Time flies around here. The last two years disappeared completely. Yes. But prior to that, yeah, it was. I think everybody's workload got a little busier. So yeah. we've just been flying through the past couple years. Yeah. Like, I can't believe it's almost December. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Literally oh. tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> um, do you know exactly what brand kibble this is? People are asking. Yeah. Probably for the their brand own is cats. called Instinct, and we do the Raw Boost. They have um, several kinds, but because we're working with more of the hybrids, um, we do the Raw Boost that gives them the extra raw that they're not getting from the mush. Gotcha. You're doing very good, sir. You are doing great. <laughs> Nothing else dropped. <laughs> it's like, you're leaving. Would you leave me? It's like we're not even here when there's food involved. I know. And then he'll still go eat grass or his plants for like the next hour. He was attacking this thing Oh. the other day. Do you see a lot of the little short spiky pieces? Yeah. yeah. He was standing up on the side of the tree eating the tallest leaves he could reach. Oh, I guess all of them that he can reach are very <laughs> short and very all the short. other ones are really long. <laughs> it's it like a kind funny. of like palm tree. No, like that's not, that's not very good. <laughs> I think we just need to start growing cat grass for like him and Simba and um yeah so cat one of our interns likes to grow the grass for them and uh I she gave me one for Simba and she gave me one for Mouser and they were completely eaten yep by the end of the day and then the next day <laughs> we I got stock in it I got so the the regurgitation of that oh fun <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Mouser oh, was fun. inside then so I found that on my desk <laughs> Doing so good, sir. Thank you, Jody, for the donation. Do you want to, while we're watching him finish this up, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about hybrids and specifically like him as a Savannah cat? Yeah, so Savannah cats um, are a, hi, <laughs> a cross breed between a domestic cat and an African serval. They can sell many generations of this. Um, Beecher here is a first generation, so his parents were a serval and a domestic cat. A lot of times that they will um, sell more of the F3s. They seem to be more like a domestic cat, whatever that means, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they're all very special in their own. I think 
at times they want to be a domestic cat and then they switch gears and their wild side comes out and all of a sudden they're a servo. Mm -hmm. I think he says he's, he's done. Expensive cat. Yes. And the reason why we have so many is because they didn't quite work out with their owners, whether it was their temperament or they just couldn't figure out a way to keep them happy. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Beecher's mom did a lot for him and built an entire outdoor addition to their house with water and waterfalls and a little pond and anything that he she thought would make him happy instead of um lashing out on her daughter mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and her family members and he just never 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 was happy about it yeah so her uh, last ditch effort to try and keep him happy was to give him up after she spent a lot of money just mm -hmm. purchasing him and a lot of money yeah. trying to alter her home for him. I think he was what, like ten to fifteen thousand yes. just to buy him and then and another another ten thousand trying to modify her home for him. Yeah. And I think because I was here the day he got here, um, I think he just wanted to be outside. I, I yeah. don't think he'll ever be that rotation candidate for inside. No. I know that. <laughs> when he no. goes inside he is a completely different cat. Yeah. Um, just knowing from medical purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think this is this is his jam. He likes to be outside. He likes all the wildlife he can hear and birds and lizards and eating grass and yep. doing his own thing. <laughs> he definitely does his own thing. Yeah. There he goes. Over to talk to Mrs. <laughs> yeah. And all of our hybrids have a very unique personality for themselves. Depending on their situation too. Like Loki's very standoffish and he likes his personal space. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Then we had Simba in the kitten cabana, and we found out that he was 50 50. <laughs> yeah, he either wanted to be all over you or just wanted to do his own thing. Yep. He also likes to rub on your legs, rub on your legs, and then a second later, he's biting your calf. <laughs> yep. So it's just everybody's very different. And Master comes off pretty sweet, but he also is a biter when he doesn't get his legs. Yep. Yeah, I He's probably the sweetest one of the bunch and none of us know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We will go to next season's way. And we will do Ginger, Zikari, then Chaos, then Max, who's probably being super patient. Oh, yeah. I was like, we could go to Max next if you want. I feel bad for Max. Marianne's already eaten. <laughs> Yes, he is a good boy. All right. So another huge thank you to everybody who's donating today on this Giving Tuesday. It's our first live of the day. We've only seen three cats have breakfast so far. We are still working on our $35,000 match. So if you are donating on any of our lives today, um, consider your amount doubled, which is amazing. Thank you to those anonymous donors for really coming through for the cats this year. Our goal is 100,000 because um, the meat costs have increased anywhere from 70 to 200%, depending on what it is that we are buying. And we buy a little bit of everything for the cats here. They have chicken and beef and turkey and pork and fish, whole prey, all kinds of things. And then there's specialty meats like ground turkey, ground beef, livers, all the things, turkey drums, chicken quarters, chicken legs, a little bit of everything. All right, so now we're actually gonna go see some African servals. We just saw Beecher who is a hybrid of that, but we're going to see Ginger and Zucari, which will be nice because Ginger never comes over for me, so <laughs> we will be hopefully able to see her today. She looks very excited. They're very different. They are very different. <laughs> two servals. This but... is Zucari. They are neighbors, so two servals. This is Zucari. This is Ginger. Ginger eats mush, mm -hmm. but will not eat mush um, every day. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have to switch it up and she gets the, the two chicks 
because she will eat them and get the organ meat that she needs from them. Mm -hmm. And then fish is her thing. Mm -hmm. And then Zucari gets his big bite. Oh, mush. This is what we were talking about. It kind of looks like hamburger, kind of the same consistency. Doesn't smell the same. No. <laughs> not made of the same thing. It, this is actually ground up cow organs. In the wild, big cats know that they are going to get most of their nutrition by eating the organs of their kill first. So this is what that is for them. Mm -hmm. And it is the most nutritious part of their diet. Yep. All right, give the cat. Oh, <laughs> She's like right. jumping and oh. gee geez. I hope I'm her Goodness. snack lady. <laughs> <laughs> gee geez. You know why I'm here. Oh. Good girl. To me, she's still the most perfect serval here. Don't let Hutch hear me say that. But physically, she looks like she could be in the wilds of Af Africa. She's just sleek, perfect ears. I was like, I was hoping she was going <laughs> to. That was like my plan. I don't want to crowd her because I do want her to ah. eat. <laughs> Fish is bouncy. She's like, nope, now I'm settled in. to bounce it your way. Now I'm settled in. And then these extensions off their enclosures that they're eating in is called their feeding lockout. As you can see that she can come and go out of here. This is, this gets cleaned every day and where they get their fresh water and their food. Kind of like their happy place, but we also use it if we need to move them. We can bring them in here and get them in a squeeze cage to maybe oh, see the doctor or go on vacation. <laughs> Sorry, babe. Oh, I know. I'm trying. <laughs> but we call this their feeding lockout or their lockout. All right. Okay. <laughs> yes, this is definitely their happy place. Uh, through our operant conditioning you programs, we make sure that the cats um, uh, are used to coming over and going in here in case we did ever need oh, to catch them. Not bad. <laughs> if we do need to catch them, there's this guillotine door that you see right here, and we can close that. It's on a on a wire here. And then it attaches off the side of the cage there. <laughs> Afton's looking for something to try to retrieve some of those bouncy fishes. She's like, I'll get it. I'm getting it. Oh, she got the one? She, yeah, she stuck her paw out the front and got the one. Good job, Ginger Cat. You got all of the pieces that are in there. There we go. One more. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> That's right back up. <laughs> yes! Yay! <laughs> There we go. Ooh, good job. Yeah, you. Good I work. think you're the winner. You um, you ate the fastest so far today. <laughs> Barely got any facts about servals in there. Of course, we know that uh, Zucari will be even worse. He he'll, he tries to inhale the entire yes and the the foot out the side. He's very unruly. Him and Cyrus definitely you could tell grew up in like a cattery where they had to probably fight for food or compete for food. Food is very exciting. Yeah, oh see. My, very that is not a lot of manners. And people try to have these as, <laughs> Sorry, <buddy. laughs> people want to have these in their house as pets. So that's craziness. I catch it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good job, bud. Don't eat too fast, though, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I try to not drop it on you. I'm trying to be polite. Oh, buddy. You You're a <laughs> mess today. Just an absolute mess. <laughs> this is going to be safe for us both here. You get your own. Slow down, too, because we don't want to see your breakfast twice. <laughs> 
before he repeat it. Yeah, I think he will too. <laughs> so this is <laughs> this is the African serval that is the crossbed with domestic to make something like Beecher the Savannah cat. Yep, I knew he ate that too fast. Does it? Slow down. This is also common for a serval to eat too quickly mm -hmm. and regurgitate, and then that's gross. But yep, and re-eat it. Yeah, him and Cyrus both do that like on a regular basis. It makes me yeah, so sad. I've seen Cyrus do. I just know it's because of the way they were brought up in such a crappy environment. Nobody gonna take it back, I swear. Nobody. I don't want that. <laughs> no, thank you. No. <laughs> you also have a piece that bounced off yeah, to the that's side. A cork. <laughs> good boy. Yeah, all your breakfast. Ooh, Trisha has a good question. She said, I thought Zucari was a walkout cat. Want to explain how and when that changed? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, he was a lockout cat, and same with uh, Cyrus was as well. Um, I made the executive decision to not lock out any of the small cats uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, one is we also have a senior keeper or higher on every route. So if someone's not comfortable feeding them, they should be because they feed big cats. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh oh, you find it? He oh, didn't. Oh. Also, um, it really had to do with their cables on their doors. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, get a like plastic coated all stainless steel cable, but one of the companies that we thought were getting all stainless steel had um, almost thread like fibers in the middle with the stainless steel around them and they are not as strong and they were breaking, but <laughs> Get your crumb. <laughs> and my my uh, my issue with that was is we don't know whose lockouts have them. Mm -hmm. And if a door comes down on a big cat, it just might be. It just might hurt them. If it comes down on a small cat, it, it could very much hurt them or possibly kill them. Mm -hmm. And so I just think it's safer for them to just have the open door feeding all of them mm -hmm. because then it's just me keeping them safe and protecting them from <laughs> from that <laughs> from harm. so what he used to do when he was a lockout cat is he would do that exact same thing only he was doing it on the door that you had to lift quickly in order to let him safely yes. in there and that could break a leg or hurt a head or there was a lot of danger to it on some of these really unruly cats so that it is actually just safer to feed him the way that yep. she just fed him yep. yeah because he used to stick his well nala used to be like that stick their whole arm up and, some and stick their out. heads in the middle of the yes. hole and their heads can't fit through the, the four by four hole yeah but if you're trying to be quick it's all about trying to beat them with their bad behavior exactly and uh, there's just too many things that made me feel uncomfortable about it yeah and because we always have a senior person on every single route I just felt it was best for the cats to just go ahead and feed them like this mm -hmm. to prevent any kind of harm to them yep true that right yeah. sir you're definitely the good example on that <laughs> yes you are oh, keep that foot in there <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Why is that so cute? You're ridiculous. Because he's Because <laughs> he always looks like he's smiling even when he's trying to attack you. <laughs> yes, I love that suggestion. Thank you very much to the person that said, let's try to get to $2,000 by the time this live ends. Oh, yeah. So we've got just a handful more Put cats. Out there. Yeah, we're at $1,400 now, so we're not far from it. We also, like I said, we are trying to reach our $35,000 match today. So all of your donations are doubled. And we've got a few cats left. And then, Jasper perfect, okay. So we're gonna go see Miss Chaos. Chaos actually came to us with Zukari and Cyrus as well. Of course, she's a little more subdued when it comes to the things they're crazy about, but then they're a lot more friendly than she is. So it's a very interesting mix.
from all three of those cats that came to us from a breeding cattery, an illegal operation out of Ohio. Here's Mr. Manny. <laughs> all right. Oh, our little diet lady. <laughs> Mr. Jinx thinking he's getting second breakfast. Hi, hi, niece. I always want her to be like the M in the YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet lady. Light when they yeah, take their first piece. Do that. Take one piece of meat and leave so you can safely put the rest in. Yep. And Chaos is a caracal. Super gorgeous animals. Super high jumpers. They're quite the, the bird hunters. I know. I could, <laughs> oh, there it yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> and they got those long ear tufts and black ears. They're known for their black ears. Hey, Penny. You're being very good. Yeah. And then I'm back for her vegetables. She's got a couple little neck maddies because she is declawed as well. Mm -hmm. She has a keeper that works with her, but <laughs> she hasn't been able to get too far with yep. the with the scratching around the neck. Mm -hmm. She only lets her scratch her bum. Yep. I know. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. Because Nisha really put an effort for like months yeah. and months and, and we finally know that got she's to had to keep her successfully take mats off her neck. Yes. And she looks similar to her, so it's That is why weird. I assigned her. <laughs> I was like, Nisha looks just like her. We should try that. Yeah. Nope. She She uh, knows the difference. Yeah. She does, but at least I mean that was huge progress after months and months Nisha was finally able to even just touch her anywhere with the scratcher because prior to that she was like swiping it out of her hand practically, so If you guys missed it, Afton mentioned that they are great jumpers and bird hunters. If you did not see um, chaos with her hen, oh, um, oh, oh, oh. On, <laughs> uh, it was what, last Tuesday, so one week ago, um, we went live to hand out turkeys and hens, and I was live while this little lady grabbed her hen, which is bigger than her head, and ran to the other section and leapt onto the t very top of that big platform over there. Second and, try. Second yep. try. <laughs> first try, she realized this bird's heavier than I thought. <laughs> and then second try, all the way to the top. Yep. Which was very impressive. I don't think I expected that either. I, I had she would no it clue. On the lower level. Yeah, I had no clue she was going to do. I she really figured about getting something different. I figured she'd go right into these palmettos and just like, but she, she showed us her athleticism that day. <laughs> very proud of her Cornish hen. <laughs> Good job. There you go. Yeah. Do <laughs> you guys got more? Uh huh. Is there, is there another thing to drop in? That's it, lady. Good job. Very good job. So pretty. I really, she's got like the prettiest eyes when she's not like squinting and hissing at me <laughs> when I get photos of her. I'm always like, you are so pretty. Got that good eyeliner. Yeah. People pay for that. People pay to have that kind of eyeliner. Good girl. All right. <laughs> Snoop it around for more. Uh, yes. <laughs> It's like you can't have a Giving Tuesday without showing my face, though. <laughs> you got a bag there that looks like you had fun with it. <laughs> you got a spice bag yesterday and flattened it. We usually roll them up, so he yeah. made sure he un. Roll them up or roll them up. <laughs> He flattened it. <laughs> Don't worry, Jinx and Manny already had breakfast, even though look at Manny up there. <laughs> He's staring at her cart because it's got food on it. <laughs> so we're going to go see Mr. Max Bobcat 
and then we're gonna end this tour hopefully when we reach two thousand dollars at jasmine tiger wow <laughs> <laughs> breakfast yeah big ball of mush and some chicken breast yep because max is another one of those cats where he can't eat bone he's Perfect. missing a lot of teeth unfortunately most That's likely true. from being a yeah it's gotta have been from not being raised by mama just poor diet yep, yep. yep. oh you guys will be shocked to see how big Max is. <laughs> Max is borderline a lynx. <laughs> He's so big. Him and Shiloh are neck and neck for who's the biggest bobcat here. But Max was confiscated from a vet's office in Rhode Island. <laughs> oh, very handsome. Here's Diablo, who we were talking about earlier. Are you probably the sweetest hybrid here? So silly. Not with that look. <laughs> I was like, not with that look. He doesn't look like the sweetest hybrid here. <laughs> All right. So yes, he was um, confiscated at a vet's office in Rhode Island. There's Desi as a kitten. So he was most likely raised by people. It makes me sad because if he's if he came to us from Rhode Island, he was most likely snatched from the wild because he's huge. He's practically a Canada lynx, <laughs> which makes sense to be up so northern um, area. So he's a big boy, and he's not spotty, which also makes me think he was meant for snow. <laughs> and there's a Marianne. Max might be a little suspicious. Oh, there he is. This is Marianne. Marianne lives with Max, but she already had breakfast. She already had the breakfast. And Maxie has to make his way all the way around. And cats that we have in multiples are likely to be separated for feeding, so Marianne cannot get to his food since she's already eating. Whoa! We didn't separate them for the longest time, but because he gets more food than her because of how large he is, mm -hmm. um, and they have a different diet, Marianne was finishing her breakfast and, <laughs> and then finishing the max. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, I didn't mean to scare you. So we decided it was best to probably separate them as well so that Max can get all his food. Yep. Big boy. He is very big boy. Lots of fluff in there. We always think that they're like super overweight during the winter time, but when they shed all that fluffy fur, we're uh -huh. like, oh, <laughs> we, could, we could use some more food. It's just so hard to tell. Yeah, what's the process that you guys take um, as far as communicating back and forth with uh, the vets to determine their diets? That's something they might want to know. Um, so we go by um, the keeper's observations because when you feed a cat, you should be observing them as a whole. A lot of them will say, I think that they're getting a little chubby or look a little thin. Um, I've been trying to go on uh, feeding routes like once a month, each route, so I can get a good look myself mm -hmm. as to how they're looking and if their diet needs to be increased or decreased. Um, I will slightly do that, but if I can't seem to regulate it, then I will um, contact our vet who will give us a better idea on what we should do. Very good, sir. Never eliminate the mush from their diet because that's the best part. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if it's something that we need to drastically change, they could just go on a what we call a mush diet. They'll still get their chicken necks if they have good teeth for it because bones are basically a great way um, to brush their teeth. Mm -hmm. I guess the chewing on the bones kind of knocks all the plaque and tartar off their teeth. So bones are just as important. Um, oh. Oh, yep, okay. <laughs> oh boy. Two, two on this route. <laughs> yeah, bones are just as important as their mushes. 
And I know you've made a video about this, but I figured it'd be fun for you to talk about as far as, you know, people love to ask us why we don't cook their food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually that video is really cute. It is. <laughs> But um, in the wild, they're not cooking their food. Yeah. They don't have these secret stoves or ovens or they don't <laughs> kill something and leave it sit out in the sun to bake. Um, they eat all raw meat in the wild, so they should be getting all raw meat um, if caring for in captivity. Mm -hmm. The only um, cat that I've ever had to cook the food for uh, was Mouser because of how picky he is but it, it's it's across the board with the hybrids they're all extremely picky mm -hmm. and some days they don't want their diet you have to come back with something else or come back with something else because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that everybody eats but they all have their different preference on what they get you try not to want to give them cat food it's not the best for them their bodies are just really unsure of what they need as far as nutrients whether they want to eat cat food or they want to eat raw meat um, they don't have the best digestive systems. Mm -hmm. um, diarrhea is also very common. Yeah. And she's speaking about the hybrids, not Mr. Max here. No. Max loves his raw meat. Yes, he does. <laughs> but he's actually not on a whole prey diet, whereas his roommate, Marianne, is. So that's some, another reason why we have to separate them. We wouldn't want Max to try to <laughs> take not, her, not to yeah, yeah, gum it to death because yeah. he doesn't have the teeth. And actually Moses and Bailey, two bobcats that live here, are the same way. She still gets that and he does not. So um, all these guillotine doors are very helpful in allowing the cats to live together for some companionship if they choose. Otherwise, um, they're solitary by nature and they don't want to compete for food or toys or things like that. So it seems like all of our multiples are now bobcats and yes. they were put together at a very young age. Either they were rescued that way, like Kulona and Dryden were rescued that way mm -hmm. and they're possibly, <clears throat> um, they could be siblings that were raised together mm -hmm. or we may have introduced them because they were extremely young and had a lot of energy to blow, but really... No they look alike. They do look alike. I will give them that. Versus Smalls and Nabisco who came in in the same rescue. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, they do and Lakota look very similar. They do. They're both small. They both yeah. have their same places. Yep. And they were rescued together. Yeah. So either siblings or we were the ones that put them together, which is not very common. Yeah. It's probably because they were extremely young and probably could use a play playmate. Yes. Life. Lots of energy to burn. And when Lots they're stuck in cages. Yeah. And pace the corner back and forth every day. That's what she did if she wasn't sleeping. And it's just so noticeable when all of her other cats don't do that. Yeah. So it's just like, what, what can we do to fix this or help her? Yeah. And we thought Max would be a, a good boy. <laughs> Look at her. She's twice her size. She's, she's hi, baby. in charge. Hi, sweet girl. He ate. You guys will be able to romp around in a minute. Actually, I could talk. Yeah, you have your maxi back. Yeah, and she just came running out too. She's like, oh, friend, I get you. <laughs> Good job, Maxi. So handsome. Uh, making all their little bobcat noises. What are you grumbling about? You didn't bring me food. <laughs> She's <laughs> not going to forget it. Well, I think you're on an enrichment list for later. So, <laughs> so we'll see these kids again. All right. See, he has to come over and check out her plate. Like, did she leave anything behind? <laughs> <laughs> Bye -bye. Nope. She looks very fluffy right now, too. <laughs> Winter coat. We're down to where most nights are in the upper 40s, low 50s, and then in the day, it's about 70s. He's changing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it was 46 when I left my house this morning, so, yep, I don't, I don't blame you. That never helps anything. <laughs> All right, so, we just have one cat left on our feeding tour this morning, and that is, Jasmine. Let's go see what her craziness is going to be this morning. 
So a huge thank you again to everybody who's donated. We're heading to our last cat. I would really, really love us to uh, get to that $2,000 mark on this feeding tour today. If you joined in late, Mr. Sim, his obsession with Afton, which is sadly, it's not as flattering as you might think. Very aggressive with her for some reason. Two other people too, but anyhow. So if you joined in late and you missed any of the cats, we actually started with Priya. Don't associate me. You're you're nice to me. <laughs> yeah. You're nice to me. Let's not associate. <laughs> yeah, she tries not to zoom past him anymore because he gets so aggressive and jumps and roars. There's a Maxie's. <laughs> so anyway, you can go to dailybigcat.com and you can watch this live all from the beginning. There's Miss Kali. All these babes already had their, ti their tiger breakfast. Jasmine is the last but not least. So again, our goal for the whole day, $100,000 with a $35,000 match. You can donate right here on our Facebook Lives. You can go to bigcatrescue.org slash Tuesday and do it through our website. You can also um, go to our main fundraiser here on our Facebook page. It is pinned to the top. And help us scoop up that $35,000 match so that all of your donations are doubled for today. All right. Red and some chicken breasts and, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a, a giant turkey drum. Yep. That's how she's gonna brush her teeth today. <laughs> and I cut her red into fours now just because she likes to take her whole reds and stash them for later. Uh-huh. So now we cut them into fours so and her turkey eat them after. Yes. <laughs> it's like a renaissance fair in here. Giant turkey legs. <laughs> she actually gets one, so do the boys uh, and Duchess, what, twice a week? Yeah. Yeah. Twice a week they get one of those giant turkey drums. All right, Jazz, say thank you to everybody. Ooh. Ooh. Very happy Giving Tuesday to all the cats. Um, since our fundraiser is so heavily about feeding the cats with the major price increases of... Um, all the meat that we order. Yes, I'll be ordering meat this afternoon. Yes. <laughs> it is time. She's a very polite girl when it comes to people lingering during her food. Yeah. She does not mind at all. When we used to have our specialty tours, she was on our feeding tour because she doesn't mind people watching her. Mm -hmm. She'll take all the attention she can get. <laughs> Definitely one of our most social tigers. Yeah. And you can see that she has a half a ear on her left side. Mm -hmm. She also has a shorter tail. Um, she was rescued like this, but we think uh, she came from Ohio and we've gotten several cats from colder climates that have the half a ear or a shorter tail and we speculate maybe that it's just cold and they have gotten frostbite or she also lived with a cage mate as well. That was her sister um, and they could have had a little scuffle here and there. You just mm -hmm. never know. She's also very diluted in color. Um, Very washed out color, yeah. Yes, and that's probably because they were trying to breed a white tiger, which is caused by inbreeding. She also has the slight cross eyes, which is pretty much what you get with every white tiger to some extent, whether you can visually see it or it's just very clear mm -hmm. that one eye just goes in. Yep. So she's slightly crossed and it has a very diluted color. So it leads us to believe that she was probably trying to be a product of um, inbreeding to create a white tiger. 
Yeah, I always um, compare her coloring to like Kimba, who I feel like was probably a way less inbred pot potentially, or really in all three of the boys are very dark. Max Tiger is very dark orange. I feel orange. like the South American ones always they come are. pretty dark. They are. Hoover was, was dark. super dark orange, yeah. So, and like she looks fluffier fur wise, whereas the boys look sleek, or at least Kimba looks sleeker. Like he doesn't even have like a fluffy chest the way she has. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's interesting to see all the, the difference. Oh, wow. Well, we made it to our 2000s. Did so we? Thank All you, right. everybody. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Very exciting. Well, we're going to um, watch her finish her turkey for sure. Actually, we're going to watch her finish everything. Then we're we don't have to there. double check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because that's, um, that's what the feeders do. They go through a whole route, and then they pretty much wait till their last cat finishes, and then they drive back through their route, and they check every single plate. Um, generally, though, with a tour like this, we can watch them each finish their diet. So, so we do plan to hand out enrichment today. I think Afton and I will have to um, take a few minutes to kind of develop a plan and see what all we've got to hand out and who it's going to go to. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> we will try to probably group a few cats together to do a handful of longer lives for you guys. You guys know with enrichment, um, not all the cats participate while we're there, but it's still fun to make sure that they all get something very cool. So we're going to come up with a plan. And so just keep your um, eyes glued to our Facebook page today. I think that's the only place I'm going to do the lives today just uh, to make it super easy for you guys to find us. If you miss any part of these, you can go to dailybigcat.com and rewatch them. You can also continue to donate on these lives even if they are not currently live. Ooh, yay, 2500 Yeah, and we will keep um, totaling between the Facebook lives the Facebook fundraiser and everything that you guys are doing through our website at bigcatrescue.org slash Tuesday. Now I'll just shut up so you can hear the crunching. I did promise a verbal update. So they attempted to move Gilligan home yesterday. That was a big fat no. I kind of expected that. Um, and then the plan was to move him home and take Servi Serval out to Funcation. That did not happen yesterday, but the hybrid swap did. So Mouser's inside the cabana. Simba Savannah is outside where Mouser was. Um, and then I believe the goal is still going to be possibly tomorrow will be the day that Kimba Tiger goes home from vacation. I think they're doing some platform work or something additional going uh, on in there. They wanted to do some painting. Some painting, some things happening there um, before we would take the next cat out, which I think was Aria. Aria. Okay. Uh -huh. So it'd be Miss Aria. And then, yes, so yesterday afternoon, Jamie ran to one of our local um, animal hospitals that frequently has wildlife that they call us about, generally squirrels, but occasionally bunnies. She did pick up two one-week-old cottontail bunnies um, and then immediately handed them to me. <laughs> so that's my I very... I still have a squirrel, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's my very first experience actually bottle feeding them. I helped out with the last few sets of bunnies, but this is my first go at um, from them at such a fragile state. Unfortunately, their nest was run over by a lawnmower, and one of the little babies is missing all of his back toes. Um, does not seem to be bothering it. We don't know if they're boys or girls. It's almost impossible to tell till they're much, much older. So I, Mark and I spent all last night coming up with like this random list of names <laughs> and uh, trying to find something a little more unisex to call them. Of course, it'll be Christmas themed. So uh -huh. I've got some ideas. I'm going to run them by Jamie and be like, you pick. I can't decide. <laughs> <laughs> they're too cute. Um, and then we'll announce their names. But yep, they are the newest to our rehab. And since Jazz is still eating, I'll fill you in on all the rest. So Malaya 
is the most recent bobcat rescue that came in a couple of weeks ago. She has shown major improvement, but we're yes. still watching her very carefully and closely. Um, she's being tapered down on some of her medications. She is currently outside and doing well. So she is one of the cats that is the reason why we've got such an ambitious goal this year for Giving Tuesday. Yes. Um, she's probably going to be a little bit of a long-term um, bobcat for rehab until we can really see, can she even see, can she hear properly? Once her meds stop, will she start walking in circles again? There's so many answers yes. that we need to feel comfortable before release. But a lot of improvements. We started so with much. having to, she was completely, I guess we'll say docile, um, which we were able to do uh, fluids, injectable medication. And then day by day, we noticed her growling a little bit more or growling a lot till we were like, she's trying to swat us. Yeah. So we had to stop those, but she miraculously also started eating on her own. So we were able to switch her to, um, like a uh, pill medication, like oral mm -hmm. so that she could do it on her own. So we've been talking like a cat that wouldn't do anything, barely knew you were there to like a cat that is very aware that you're there eating on her own and was able to be shifted outside. So yes, a yeah. lot of improvements. So we got all of our paws and fingers and whatever we have crossed <laughs> for Malaya. Absolutely. Malaya. Yeah. Um, and then same thing with Autumn. Autumn has just shown an insane amount of improvement. A, like 30 some minute video of her playing makes my heart like cringe up, yes. but it's like so exciting for her. Yeah, no, it's amazing. So she's got her indoor outdoor space. Um, we are currently hoping she'll just start getting a little more regular when it goes to eating and pooping. <laughs> Yay. <Yeah. laughs> that seems to be the theme this year. Cause summer went through the same thing. Summer's doing amazing outside. She's just still very teeny, tiny. Teeny, tiny so there will be more tests in the future to reevaluate her as well um so that's it for those three and to and give an idea great. on um summer mm -hmm. i when i was caring for her it was a cleaning day so i have to go into the enclosure not with her but she was on the other side and um she only goes up to my ankle yes. so i think the explore camera kind of makes her look a little bigger than it what she does, really is yeah. she is still extremely small yes as far as like literally up to my ankle. I thought the same yesterday because I was like, I think we need to mow your enclosure because she's she just leaps through it. She leaps through the grass it's because it's so tall. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's the exercise she needs. I don't know. But <laughs> and then um, last but not least, because Kahira and Birdie are doing great. We just need them to get a little bit bigger. Um, and then they will be collared for release, just like Pia and Bankman. Um, but the last little um, nugget that we can talk about would be Salem, the flying squirrel. Yeah. And she's doing great. I believe Gail is actually her full-time caregiver still. So um, that's going well, too. So it's... Uh... Yeah, and I heard she's going to move into the rehab hospital soon. And will mm. be able to be cared for by the rehabber of today. Cool. Because she'll be go down to two formula feedings instead of... Three. Nice. So that'll be like an AM PM situation, yep. which we're already out there AM and PM yep. dealing with um, autumn. autumn. Yep, definitely. Cool. You made a bony mess. You did, but you did great. And you didn't run away. I really no. thought all this talking eventually she'd be like, I am going to take this over here <laughs> where it's more quiet. <laughs> all right. Well, a huge thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for the kickoff of Giving Tuesday here at Big Hit Rescue in Santa Florida. And we are raising money for a rehab program and for feeding these guys. <laughs> Way up. <laughs> Let's get this girl a healthy budget. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you guys so, so much. And we will be back probably in the next hour or two. Like I said, we're going to formulate a plan. I'm going to need to charge my phone or we won't be doing any of this. So, <laughs> so uh, stay tuned and thank you guys so, so much. We'll see you guys soon.